<laughs> Maybe. Check, 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 check.
Hello, everyone, and welcome to game number one of the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association playoffs as this series features the Ladner Pioneers taking on the North Shore Indians. When we look at the standings through the season, both teams have played 16 games. The Ladner Pioneers, a perfect 16 and no record so far, 32 points on the season. They have 226 goals for 70 goals against 348 penalty minutes. And their last 10 games, naturally, a 10-0 and 0 on a 16-game winning streak. North Shore Indians, on the other hand, they have played 16 games, 10 wins, 6 losses, 20 points on the season, 154 goals for, 129 against, 182 penalty minutes. Very stingy in the penalty department. And the last 10 games, they have managed a record of 7-3 and 0. Home games for the Ladner Pioneers. They have a perfect 8-0 and 0 record. And the North Shore Indians have a record of 4-4 and 0. The away routine for the Ladner Pioneers looks, again, very similar to the home record, 8-0 and 0. The North Shore Indians, their away record, six wins, two losses, no ties. The bottom three teams in the league, the Porto Quitlam Saints, Victoria Shamrocks, and the U.S. Samabellies failed to make the playoffs. Well, they played around last weekend, but neither team advanced. The North Shore Indians advanced to this game. We are at Delta's Showcase Arena, the Sun God Arena in lovely North Delta. They are doing renovations to the uh, Ladner Arena right now, getting set new lighting. And the lighting here you can see, and we'll see if we can get a shot of it later on, but the lighting here is very, very impressive. New lighting, Ladner will be putting the new lighting in for next season as well. We're watching the Indians the North Shore Indians make their way out onto the floor right now. And we are just waiting for the announcement and the arrival for your Ladner Pioneers, who normally, as I mentioned, play out of the Ladner Leisure Center. Game two in the series will be Thursday night from the Harry Jerome Center. And we will once again be webcasting or streaming that game live as well. We're looking at doing all five games, should it go five games in the series right now. We'll listen in for the announcements, if we can listen and hear what they're saying through the public address system. And then we will have the official face-off for game one of the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association playoff final championship round. Get set to take place here at Delta's Sun God Arena.
everybody, welcome back as we get set to take on game number one here from the Sun God Arena. We're just looking to see who will be taking and playing goal for the North Shore Indians. We can tell you that Eric Penny will be between the pipes for the Ladner Pioneers as they make their way back down. And I'm looking, I believe it's going to be Alex Bouquet going to be in between the pipes as Bear Martin will be on the bench. Backup goaltender for the Ladner Pioneers will be Matt Hills with Penny getting the start. So it all gets down to a final playoff series right now. And the teams are pumped. The players were coming in here bright and early today, of course, for an 8 p.m. game. Face-off time once the anthem's all done. The players were actually arriving as we were coming in at 5.30 this afternoon. I don't know whether it was a simple fact they wanted to get here early or just beat the traffic. So Alex Bouquet between the pipes, as I mentioned, for the North Shore Indians. He will take over there. And when there's stats for Alex Bouquet, says he's played two games, two wins, shots against 80, goals against 10, a goals against average of 5.07, and a save percentage of 8.75. You look at the Ladner Pioneers, Eric Penny, he's played 12 games, seven wins, shots against 246, goals against 36, and a save percentage of 0.854, and we are officially underway from the Sun God Arena in Delta. Promptly threw it all the way back that time. Baker had control, now they dish it back down the left side, they get control, Kirkby comes inside, cutting towards the front part of the net will be Pace. Pace goes in, Kirkby's wide open, taking a shot, kicked out that time, Bouquet booted it back out, goes back inside the crease. Back again, Kirkby rips that one right on goal and Bouquet makes a big impressive stop on that one and they throw it all the way back out the center floor. Mason comes down. Mason looks, cross pass, back in. Goodwin was going to go after it, changed his mind. He's off on a change on the far side. As they go back down the right side this time, they're cutting back on the inside. McKinley is over on the right side, wide open. They saw him, they gave it to him. McKinley works his way back inside. Open on the far side, is wooden. He couldn't get the ball. And it'll go all the way back down the floor. And chasing this one back down. Good play to pick it back up. Again will be Davidson. They give it back around. Davidson's going off on a change on the far side. Benches are on the far side, and of course the penalty box over on the near side of our location here at the Sun God Arena. Cutting back, waits, nice play, trying to cut inside. Mallory goes in, Mallory had control. Mallory passed it back around, getting a shot. Here Wires goes in and puts the first goal on the board right now. 18.44 remaining in the period, so a minute and 16 seconds in, they get the first goal up on the board right now. We would like to make mention, just so everyone is aware of it, we, not glitches from our point of view right here, but the score bug isn't working 100%, only due to the score clock and the way it's set up inside the Sun God Arena. And it's a workaround shot clock. And the shot clock is actually located at the end of the arena, at both ends of the arena, so it's different from Ladner. So the shot clock will not be up on the screen tonight. You will see the score clock, not the shot clock. So long pass, back all the way over. Shush has control. Pace goes back down the left side. Shush gets it back. Goes back, cuts back to the middle, going inside, looking, trying to feed it wide open that time. They did, they got it back to Pace. Pace cuts back to middle, back over the corner on the far side. Shush is wide open, waits. Kirkby rips a shot off the netting on the far side and off of the goaltender as well, Bouquet. So they give it back around again, and Kirkby picks this one back up. Kirkby back in the corner, holding on to it. Caruto looks, he's wide open, calling for it. Don't think they heard him. Now Caruto still gets... Free, will they give it to him? Yes, they did. Taking a shot, then he puts that one in. And the Pioneers jump out to a 2 nothing lead right there. Two minutes and three seconds into the opening period. Two quick shots, two quick goals right now, the way it works out. Referee will go back to center and make the announcement to the timekeeper. And again, welcome to the broadcast on behalf of our crew here at the Sun God Arena. And thanks for tuning in and listening to all our webcasts for the course of the season. All the kind words, very, very appreciative. Sophie doing all the magic work on camera for us this evening. Mateo doing all the magic work behind the scenes, making me sound and the only thing he doesn't give me is makeup to make me look good, but he does a marvelous job back behind the scenes. Nice to have them with the crew. Dylan's off tonight. I think he's actually working the Vancouver Canadians game. So he is out, Sophie's working. Back down and Pace has control of it. Waits, Pace, cut to the middle, Pace. 
Over on the far side, Shush back around to the middle again, back to Mallory, Mallory back to Shush, rolled in and out of the webbing of the stick, couldn't hold on to this one. And it goes back and Baker had it and then lost it. And they give it back over again, nice play. Keith gets it. Keith takes it on the one hopper, a funny bounce in and out of the webbing of a stick. Keith back over to Shush, far side. Keith is the web, he's the actual captain for the team. Inside, shot, will it go in? Referee says no, we're gonna go back up floor the other way and let's pick this one back up again and grabbed it. As they gripped it up, this is Baker that has control. Baker straight down the right side. Shrum has it. Shrum, he walks his way all the way in, down the right side wall. Shrum comes inside, cut to the front of the net, back over on the far side. Will they get themselves free? Not this time. They'll set it back up again. Cutting back in front, this is McIntyre's that has it. McIntyre's trying to feed it back free. He did. He got it back, and as usual, we have one player on the floor that we do not have at our roster. It's a number seven. We'll get him as quick as we can, very likely after the first period, though. And they go back all the way out. Claire throws it back again to Kirkby. Kirkby dangles his way back down the left side. Claire is off on a change. Shushes the trailer. Couldn't get it back. Taking a shot. Was inside the crease. So they'll set this one back up. And the Indians work all the way out the center floor as they hustle their way back in the right side. They come inside. Jensen goes in. Jensen gets it back. Give and go play from Goodwin. Goes inside. What a check. What a hit on that play. Bodies are flying right now, and Davidson's going down the left side. Didn't give it back to him. Thought he was calling for it. Barker lobs it back again. Back out to Keith. Barker's off on a change. As he goes off, Davidson goes off with him. Huge shot, scores another one buried back behind Bouquet. And that puts him up by three right now. About four minutes and one second in to the game. The uh, Ladner Pioneers jump out to a 3-0 lead right now. We go back to mid-floor. They'll come in. We'll get the officials as quick as we can as well, if that's a possibility. I always like to give the officiating crew all sorts of recognition. They deserve it. Lots of great minor lacrosse provincials worked out in the last little while. We want to thank them for playing such a significant Canada's national summer sport as well. Straight down the left side where Garrison comes in. Garrison throws it back. This one's grabbed by Claire. And Claire gets back out mid-floor, just lobs it back again. Nice play by Claire as he threw this one back over to Mike Mallory. And Mallory dangles his way back inside. Kirkby's the trailer. Kirkby cut to the front. Mallory back out to Keith. Keith, far side. Nice play coming off of the wall. A bit of a grab play going inside. Here, Wires goes in, and he buries that one. And the Pioneers are clearly taking control of this. They're questioning as to where they should be. Watching a couple of Indian defenders out there trying to sort this things out. And here Wires puts it up by four right now. Four nothing. As we have a good crowd on hand, you might not notice it if you look on the far side of the stands. It's sparse on the far side. But our side, where we are doing the broadcast from up behind the penalty box, we have a good crowd have come in to Sun God Arena here. As we mentioned, unable to play it in Ladner, so we're back at Sun God for here and Saturday night as well. They just lobbed this one back. Off on a change on the far side was Mason. Mason goes off. Couple players tripped up. Bit of a hack on the far side. Barker takes his man off. And I believe we're going to have a slashing penalty for Barker. Referee indicates he got him on the side. I think it's Barker going to the box, but Barker maybe wanted a second opinion on the play right now. A slashing penalty indicated by the referee. He asked the referee or questioned the referee as to what the call was, and regardless, nonetheless, as he was questioning the referee, the referee make mention. So Barker's played 10 games, five goals, nine assists, 14 points on the season. And as he looks right now, we're looking, Barker has 14 penalty minutes on the season through 16 games. Back around mid-floor, going inside, taking a bullet of a shot right there, trying to pick it back up on the rebound, unable to. Now finally they pick it back up. A one-hopper went loose that time, and Matt Beers goes after it. Beers takes his man off of the ball. They go back down. Claire has it over on the left side. Claire, far side, nice play to dangle. This one back in the side, back to Bromley. Shush. Takes his time, comes off of the wall. He's going to go after it. Will he pick it up? Nope, they left this one. A bouquet has control. Bouquet just throws it straight forward up to Joseph. Joseph down the right side. Shush goes after him. Shush is off on a real quick change. Quick transition play by the players of both teams right now. They're making it work extremely well. And they go back down. McKinley comes in, takes a shot. Grab the pick back up. 
And now they'll work their way all the way back down again. Cornwall goes in, rips a shot wide of the target, and it goes back the other way, and finally the Indians come back down the floor, aggressive. Joseph, cross pass, shot, scores! Nice pass, tic-tac-toe. Joseph set that one back up, and that'll be a power play marker right there as Joseph threw that one back over. Good, quick pass. Got it back around, and that will put the Indians one on the board, and they'll clear the penalty off of the clock. And they do, so now we have a four to one contest right now. See if we can get the announcement from the penalty timekeepers down below our broadcast location. From the draw, they pulled it all the way back that time. That was Barker that pulled it back. Don't see Zabo in the lineup tonight. Normally takes all the draws at center. Now they lob it all the way back. That's Bromley that throws it back. Keith is wide open. Pace is out there, Pace looks. Trying to get it, Pace is a trailer this time. Here Wires goes in, he's got one on the board, they call him for the crease and now they'll leave this one. And the Indians will pick this one back up at mid floor and they're gonna work their way back down the right side. Mason was going after it, changed his mind, left it for Goodwin. Goodwin still in control, Goodwin guards the ball, not gonna give anybody a chance to get it, Irving stays with him. Goodwin still calling for it. Give it back down the far side again, that's Roberts that had it. Ripping a huge shot right on goal was McIntyre. And this will be picked back up over on the far side, trying to get it again. That's Avery that goes after it. Avery unable to get it. Irwin stays with him back in front over in the crease on the far side. They'll chase it. Irving tried to get it. Not going to get it on the cross pass once again. They'll set this one back up. Huge shot stopped again by Eric Penny. Penny held onto it as he had this one. They just go back, and now they'll leave it in the corner as they give this one back around again, back to McIntyre. McIntyre off of the wall, the drums come to life, cutting back over on the far side, Goodwin. Goodwin goes deep in front of the crease, far side, waits, nice shot taken that there by McIntyre. Huge stop again by Eric Penny. Penny, as well as Bouquet, standing very tall and playing tough inside their creases as Caputo comes inside, back all the way out in front to Shush. Shush goes back behind the goal, trying to set this one back up again. Did he? Yes, he did. Now they go back around, work this one around again. Nice setup play to get control of it and get it loose. And off on the line change will be Kirkby. And Kirkby a good shift on that play. Bromley gets control. Bromley throws it a one hopper back to mid floor. Wait, they'll throw it back around. Good play to get it back. And Carey had it. But they'll give the ball this time back around. Possession says the referee will go back to the North Shore Indians. And they leave this one, this will be Minim. McMim gets control. McMim up to mid floor. He goes all the way back, throws it on the cross pass, back to this infamous number seven that we have to find out who he is. Waits, low sub shot off of the back wall taken by Joseph. Joseph goes after it, picked back up by Roberts. Roberts is in there. Roberts throws it back all the way out the center floor again. Joseph comes in, spins around, gets away from his man, runs the rolling pick. Joseph is wide open, couldn't get control, takes it a hopper off of the wall. And this is grabbed by Cornwall. Cornwall leaves it for Penny. Penny throws it up front back to Carey and Carey just deals it back around to Keith. Carey's off on a change. Keith goes down the left side. Also in front again is Pace. Pace comes off of the wall. Look, Keith is out there as well. Pace is trying to get himself loose. So is Kirkby. Kirkby's calling for it, gets control. Kirkby in front, wait, shot again and Pace buries it. Nice tic-tac-toe play right there. Set up Kirkby. Keith and Pace just was the one that hammered that in. And we have a five to one contest right now with 11, 21 remaining in period number one. Don't have the shots up on the clock. I don't see the shots on goal. They're not listed. I do believe they're allowed to, or they can work for this score clock. Interesting, uh, I'll give you a little bit of tidbit information that I was told about this score clock. And they'll leave the ball back around. Pace just drops it this time. Pace leaves it and Kid picks it back up. They're waiting for the change. Kid has control. Off on a change is Jensen. Kid goes deep inside the corner. Good passing play again by Wooden. Wooden goes inside, waits. McIntyre is wide open again. Trying to get it. They cut themselves in front of the goal, trying to get control again. Kid still has control, centering it back out in front. Wooden gets a shot away. And they're calling for the interference on the pick play, so they'll set this one back up, and North Shore will take possession of it. North Shore working their way back around, coming inside, taking a shot, reset the shot clock, and the goaltender will adjust the net himself. Fixes it back up, a little different from hockey where they blow the whistle and get it adjusted. Not here, goaltenders do it to help themselves out and keep the game going. Mallory 
Dumped it back out to Kirkby at center floor. Kirkby comes inside. Caputo goes in. Back around again. Back to Bromley. Bromley got the shot. Was blocked and intercepted. Now they reverse and go back up floor the other way. Good setup play to get it back down. Shum comes in. Shum. Cross pass all the way out to mid floor. Shum goes back down. Waits over on the far left side. Prince comes inside. Prince about the second shift of the contest so far that we've seen Prince on the floor. Back around again, they give it back to Prince. Prince goes in, rips a shot, what a bullet, and it bounces all the way off of the back wall. And finally, they get control back to center floor again. Barker goes back down, waits, stops, lobs it back out to Keith. Keith over on the far side. Shush comes inside, as Shush goes inside, Pace cuts in, Keith cuts inside as well. Back to Caputo, Caputo goes in, takes a bullet of a shot again, and Bouquet makes a stop on that one. And they lob it all the way back forward, straight down a one hopper as Jensen goes after it. Jensen mid floor, Goodwin takes a shot. That was grabbed again by Penny and Penny holds onto it. Penny leaves this one back for Keith and Keith just comes up mid floor, very slow. Then changes it, he's off on a change. Also going back down is Kirkby. Kirkby on the left side, Caputo comes inside. Pace is out there, gets it, rips it off of the post. Bounces all the way back out to his own man and here wires grabs this one. Here Wires throws it back in front. They'll pick it back up again. Nice play. Caputo rips that shot. And the Pioneers have a real quick change again. They throw it back. Carey gets the shot away. The 30-second shot clock went. And they go back up floor the other way. And they'll just leave it back out in front of the penalty box. Carey stops it. Carey leaves that one for McKinley this time. McKinley. He goes down the right side. McKinley give this one back around. Nice play to cut to the front part of the goal. Trying to get themselves loose. That's Robert that comes in there. Back around. Good play again to work it. This is Wooden that comes in. Wooden throws it back inside the corner. Robert goes after his man. Carey is at mid floor. Couldn't get control of the ball. Now they reverse it back and they'll go back the other way. And Beers throws it straight forward. Goes off front of change. Mallory has the ball. Mallory back to Keith. Keith comes back down. Here Wires is on the right side. Here Wires cuts to the middle part of the floor. Mallory gets it. Back to Keith. Keith goes in deep inside the corner, cross pass back again to Mallory out of his reach. And Kirkby set that one up. They go a long stretch pass back to Shum. Shum comes in. Shum holds onto it, waits. Now he goes back towards mid floor, gives it back around this time to Wooden. Wooden goes in, waits. Shum comes inside as well, trying to get it back around, gets it back to Joseph. Joseph, far side. Nice setup play, and Wooden just ripped that shot away, and they'll grab it. And go back the other way in reverse as Irving goes back down. Irving back to mid floor to Bromley. Bromley lobs it back around again. Nice setup. Pace is wide open. Pace couldn't get control of it. Caputo goes inside. Pace gets control. Pace back to Mallory. Far side to Shush. Shush comes inside. Mallory. Cross pass. Mallory goes in. Wait. Shush is calling for it. Didn't give it back to him. Now Pace comes in. Mid floor, looks back around again. Caputo rips a shot, big stop by Bouquet. And they kick this one all the way back out and the Indians come all the way back to center floor. Straight down the floor this time and Mason goes back down. Mason works his way back inside. So we go back again and Beers calling for it. Didn't give, give him the ball and Kirkby has control this time for the Pioneers. Kirkby back to Keith again, Keith. Center on the far side to Shush. Logan Shush has control. Back out the middle to Here Wires. Here Wires goes inside. Waits. We have a penalty indicated by the referee. It's a holding penalty. You're going to see this is going to the North Shore Indians. Just to note again, Mateo reminds me to ask everybody and let you know that the game time workaround as well. The shot clock is not working for the broadcast tonight. Mind you, the broadcast, the shot clocks are at both ends of the arena, so it's a little bit tough and difficult to get them in our system. Whereas Ladner, they're on the clock, which the clock is at one end of the wall. And everything is all uniform back there. Caputo gets it back again. Nice cross. Mallory is wide open. Caputo goes in, takes a shot, stopped by Bouquet. Nice setup play as Bouquet just hammered that one. Nice setup. Now they're trying to march their way all the way back up to mid floor. They do. They get it back around. Up to Mason. Mason goes after it. In and out of the webbing of a stick. Doucette goes after it. He gets rocked. Doucette felt and paid the price on that one. And now they take their time back out to pace. Pace slow to come up to mid floor again. Pioneers up 5-1. to one. We've got about 6.28 in the first period remaining. Minor penalty is still in effect. 
Pioneers on a power play. Caputo takes a shot, missed the target. Bouquet just watches that one go wide. Baker comes in, he's gonna get control. They change it and they're gonna give the ball back around this time for the Pioneers. Back out to Pace, Shush is wide open. Caputo, Pace, Shush, far side again. Back to Mallory, Mallory, back to Pace. Back on the far side to Caputo. Back around again to Mallory. Mallory, cross pass. Nice play to set this one back up. Bromley goes in, takes a shot, stopped again by Bouquet. There's about 50 seconds left in the power play for the Latiner Pioneers. Up to mid floor, good hustle to get him back. This is ba Baker that gets up. Baker goes on the change on the far side and Goodwin has the ball. Goodwin takes his time, good time and good presence to kill seconds off of the penalty that they're killing right now. Baker is wide open, McKinley is wide open. McKinley gets control, rips a shot, stopped by Eric Penny. Penny had to be alert, get that one off of the left arm and they grab it again and they go back up floor the other day and this is Barker that has it, Barker. Back to Logan Shush, Shush trying to get it, he does, he throws it left side to Kirkby. Kirkby comes inside, Keith is the trailer, Shush has control, Bromley, Shush, Kirkby, looks back to Shush, goes in, back pass over the shoulder, there's a little bit of a tic-tac-toe, shot, scores again, and that will be a power play goal with two seconds remaining in the minor penalty, and returning back on the floor will be Ryan Jensen. So we're looking at the goals, the way they're all set up right now, good passing play, very, very quick passing play as well, and we talked about Logan Shush and what he has done so far. So far, Logan's played 11 games, 17 goals, 41 assists so far in the season for 58 points. No penalty minutes on the season and five power play goals and one shorthanded goal. Indians come back down the right side this time. They'll try and set this one back up. This is Baker that has it. <clears throat> Baker goes off on a change. Also over on the far right side, Roberts is wide open. <clears throat> couldn't get control, now they go in, far side, ripping a shot, wide of the target. Penny just let that one go by and it rolls all the way back down the floor. And the shot clock just turns and changes, so now they throw it back down the other way. And they'll leave this one as Eric Penny will pick the ball up. Penny gets it, lobs it to mid floor again. As he gives this one back out to Mallory. Mallory's played 10 games so far, five goals, 11 assists on the season. Back into Shush in the corner. Kirkby is out there. Kirkby looks, goes after the one hopper. A funny bounce right there. Nobody was going to get control of this one. Now they throw it a long high pass. Shush scores a high shot right there. He just jumped up and grabbed that one somehow and buried that one in. That puts him up 7-1 right now with 4.15 remaining in period number one. And again, just to know that the game time is a workaround as the well. The shot clock is not working for the broadcast tonight because, as mentioned, it's at the end of the arena, not on the score clock. Long draw that won that one, giving it back. Barker goes back and he threw it in his own corner. Beers picked it back up. Beers lobbed it back out and Mason goes after it. And they'll chase it back around again. Nice play for the Indians. They're trying to get themselves free, wide open. Somebody lost their stick out there. Just trying to figure out who lost their stick. They go back after, I believe it was Sam Clare picked it back up again, cross pass back over on the far side. They're trying to come inside to get control. Prince comes in, Prince cross pass back again, shot, stopped by Penny. Just roll this one and watch it go wide. Now Penny will pick this one back up, give it back out to Doucette. Doucette gets it on a one hopper, staying with him is Bobby Kidd. Kidd's forcing him wide to the outside. Nice play by Kidd to stay with him on that play. Kirkby comes inside. Kirkby goes in, back to Bromley. Again, Keith gets a bullet of a shot right on goal. Keith goes after it again, picked it back up. Pick play ran right there by Caputo. Gets control. They'll take it back in the corner again. And finally, the Indians march their way all the way back up. Lost control, Bromley shoots on the steal and scores and puts that one back in. And as we look, Spencer Bromley, 16 games, he's got 31 goals, 24 assists for 55 points on the season and 26 penalty minutes to go along with that. And we'd mentioned earlier on the season that the Pioneers are a perfect 16 and no record through the season for 32 points, 226 goals for. North Shore Indians have a record through 16 games of 10 and six, 20 points on the season, 154 goals for. 
So back on the right side again. Just trying to set a couple things up so we can see. I believe it's Gillis, Brian Gillis for number seven for North Shore that didn't give us the roster for. They go back around again. Joseph goes in, Joseph off. Gillis comes inside trying to grab it. And this is picked back up by Lacroix over on the far side. They chased it back around. Shot clock goes, so they'll leave this one. And we have a penalty assessed by the referee. They might question this one. In fact, I believe they are. A slashing penalty assessed for North Shore. And this is Goodwin going to the penalty box. And Goodwin sits in the penalty box. Goodwin's played so far as I've looked. He's got one game played so far, it says. Three goals, two assists for five points on the season and two penalty minutes through regular season play. Back out again. Nice setup play. They give it back to Pace. Pace gets it from Shush over in the corner on the far side. Here, Wires misplayed it. Couldn't dent it on a one hopper. And now they'll grab it and eventually get their way all the way back out to mid floor. Indians killing the minor penalty right now. Still short handed. Mason comes in. Mason back around again. The kid goes in, takes the shot. Penny with a big save. Waits. Pace picks this one back up for the Pioneers. And he dangles his way all the way back out to mid floor with Shush down the right side. And Pace works his way in. Pace comes back in, waits. Nice setup play as they're trying to work this one back around again. Will they get it back? Caputo is wearing number 21, we mentioned. Back around again. Pace, far side. Here, Wires goes in. He rips that shot. Shush goes after him, couldn't get control of it. Now Pace, Shush, as well as Caputo off on a change, and they go back up the floor the other way, back to Baker. Baker down the right side. There's still about a minute, about a 55 seconds left in their minor penalty. Back pass over the shoulder. Nice setup play. Back to McKinley. McKinley comes back down again. Looks McKinley was going to go after his man. He's off on a change, and finally they'll leave it, and Doucette will go off on a change. As Doucette goes back up to mid floor. Nice play to set it back around again. They lob it back down. Finally, Shush gives it back around to Kirkby. Kirkby, far side to here, Wires, waits. Back to Shush, Shush goes in, back to Kirkby. Kirkby goes, back pedals towards the boards. Pass, pass over the shoulder, rip that shot away. Nice play to set this one back up. And we are in the last minute of play right now. Waits, Kirkby throws it in, shot by Keith, grabs and stopped by Bouquet. And the Indians come all the way back up the center floor. They work their way back down, Jensen goes back down. Nice setup play by Jensen to work it in the corner. Jensen back out to mid floor one more time and they were gonna work this one. Nice play to set it back around again. They eventually got it back. Gillis had it. Gillis gets himself free. Will they get the shot away? They're trying. There's about 15 seconds left in the first period. They'll go over on the far side again. Joseph goes in, Joseph comes inside. Gillis goes in, unable to get control. Beers is down the right side. Beers takes his time up the mid floor, looks at the clock, goes in, rips a shot. Wide of the target, probably by about five feet. And the buzzer goes to end period number one. And after one period of play, we're looking right now at an eight to one score in favor of the Ladner Pioneers after 20 minutes of play. Of course, the Pioneers go out their end gate. And we talked about uh, the season, the team so far through their 16 game season. North Shore Indians, they enter this game on a two game winning streak. They're Goals for an average per game is 12.5. Goal differential is plus 13. Power plays of 56% and penalty kills of 67%. And the penalty minutes per game, 19.5. When you look at the North Shore, that's the North Shore Indians. We look at the Ladner Pioneers right now, 16 game winning streak. Goals per average is 14.1. Goal differential is 156. The power plays is 43%. Penalty kills is 82%. And penalty minutes per game, 21.8. So after one period of play, well, it was on the clock. They're adjusting it and getting it reset. It's 8 to 1 the score after one period of play. Grab something cool, refreshing to drink, and palm back and join us for the call for period number two for. Playoff action, game number one for the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association playoff final round.
everybody, welcome back. Well, we are about to get number period number two underway right now, and we were talking earlier on about the playoffs, this being the final round, the final series, as the North Shore Indians are playing right now, the hometown, the Latiner Pioneers, albeit we're playing out of the Sun God Arena. North Shore Indians, we should make mention in the first round, following the season play, they played the Victoria Shamrocks, two games, they've won both of their games back to back, North Shore as well as Victoria. And they pull out the four points. Goals four, they had 25. Goals against, they had 12. And naturally, if you reverse that, the Victoria Shamrocks had 12 goals for and 25 against. Not hard to do the math on that equation. Penalty minutes right now, entering game and after the first round series. North Shore Indians had 39 penalty minutes and the Victoria Shamrocks had 41. So a shout out to all our friends listening in over in Victoria who play out of the Q Center over in lovely Victoria. Used to be Bear Mountain Arena. Very familiar with Vancouver Island, with the school up in the Comox Valley at George Vanier High School. So know everybody over there very well. I actually don't mind the ferry trips out to the island all the time. Nice, I find it relaxing. So again, welcome to our broadcast. Playoff game number one of the final West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association playoff action, league play and playoff action for the 2022 season. After one period, the Pioneers are up by an eight to one margin right now. Teams are back, five aside, no penalties being served. Bromley goes back down. Bromley gives this one back down over on the far left side. Shush is wide open, Bromley goes in, they give it back to Shush, cross pass, back around again. Nice play to rip it back inside. That was Pace that got the shot away. Stopped by Bouquet, and now they go back up floor the other way, and they march away straight down the left side. Cross pass over on the far side. Mason give it in. Mason's up on a change, trying to get it back to Bobby Kidd. Kidd's wide open. Couldn't give it back to him. They reverse, and they go back again, and Avery comes back down. Avery back over to Doucette. Doucette cuts in the middle part of the floor, rips a shot. Huge save again by Bouquet. Goes over the right side corner, and this one's picked back up by Kidd who dishes it back out to mid-floor. Nice play to set it back around to McIntyre. McIntyre goes back, Doucette comes back in his own half of the floor. Doucette goes after him, couldn't get control. Nice cross pass by Roberts. Roberts is wide open. McIntyre is calling for it. Didn't hear him, didn't see him. He's way out to mid-floor. McIntyre is still wide open and calling for the ball. Now he says, I've had enough, nobody talks to me, and I'll go back off on a change. He did as he goes off on a change. Also is there is Joseph and they'll leave the ball and the Pioneers will go back after this one. It was all the way back down the Indians corner. Just gonna see where it ends up rolling. It's like a golf green trying to figure out where it's gonna end up. If it's me, it would end up in the water if we were close to the ocean. Back in front, waits, huge shot stopped again by Bouquet off of the arm of Bouquet that time. Shot was taken that time by Car Caputo and now they go back up floor the other way straight down the floor as they come back up trying to set it back around they did and they'll work it in again as quick as they can there's the drums come to life we were talking about them uh, part way check heavy heavy hit getting back up just completely caught him i don't even think he saw anybody coming inside just got hit like a mack truck paid the price on that one but he gets up Nothing further materialized on that. And they go back all the way out again. This is Prince that had it. Prince calling for it. Comes in, runs the pick. This is grabbed again by McIntyre. McIntyre is going to go in. He's off on a change. It'll go in the corner on the far side. And Carey will grab this one for the Pioneers. Carey comes back down over the right side to Claire. Claire throws it back inside to Bromley. Bromley right side, deep in the corner this time. Trying to come out of the corner, back to Shush. Shush goes in, high shot over the shoulder, chasing it back around again. Kid goes back after it. This is Bouquet that grabs it, and Bouquet gives this one back over to Kid. And Kid slowly work his way, a nice little bit of a pace play right there to back out to mid floor. He comes back down, directing traffic with his right hand. He had control of the ball in his left hand. Centers it back around again to McIntyre. McIntyre is out there. Kid is wide open, calls for it. Tried to grab it off a one hopper, unable to. Shush gets control. Nice play. Shush gets away from Kidd. Cornwall goes back down. Shush over the shoulder to Cornwall. He's pretty synonymous with that back pass. If you can watch him do it, easy to do if you know what you're doing. Don't think I'm going to try it. Not hope. Again, here Wires comes back down. Goes in, rips a shot off of the back wall. Bounces all the way back down the floor. And as it goes all the way back down, they'll leave this one. 
Will they throw it? They'll give a long stretch pass back up the floor and they'll leave this one again and North Shore will pick the ball back up one more time. Dozy will go in the corner, he does, he grabs control of it. Dozy comes out, gets away from Pace who was guarding him and covering him off of the ball. Now they reverse it and Prince goes back down. Prince down the left side, Prince comes inside, goes back inside, waits, cuts, takes a sub shot, stopped again by Penny, another secondary stop by Penny, and finally they grab it and reverse and go back up floor the other way. Nice setup pass on that one to Avery. Avery back in front to Claire, diving play, and does it go in? It did, but there's no goal because he was inside the crease, so the goal was disallowed. Now they reverse it and go back up floor the other way. Baker goes in, high shot over top of the net. Not gonna put that one back in. Completely missed the target by a whole bunch, and Gillis had it. Ripped the shot, that was kicked out by Penny. Nice shot taken by McIntyre. The drums come to life, the Indians pressing. McIntyre calls for it, gets it left side. As McIntyre goes back down, cuts to the middle, rolls to the middle, back pass over the shoulder to Roberts. Roberts gets it on a one hopper, pushed off of the puck by Barker, and they wait for it. We've got a penalty call by the referee, and I believe this one's gonna be going against the Pioneers. Pioneers called for the minor penalty. Call him for two minutes. Just gonna see, I think he called it for a slashing penalty. Matt Beers is gonna be going in the box to serve this one. So Beers will go in the penalty box to serve the shorthanded minor penalty. And of course, for Matt Beers so far, Matt has played eight games, record of four goals, four assists, eight points, 14 penalty minutes on the season for Matt Beers. They dish it all the way back out to mid floor again. McKinley gets it back. McKinley, McIntyre, wide open. Back to McKinley. Goes in, rips a high shot. Penny just watches it roll wide. Couldn't get control. Back to again to McKinley. McKinley goes in, looks. Stutter step back over the shoulder again. McKinley gets it back again. Looks, goes inside. McIntyre is wide open. Not going to give it to him. Claire grabs this one. And as Claire goes back into it, Gillis stays with him. And they take it in a one hopper. Back at the Irving at center floor. Irving comes back down. Lob pass back over the shoulder again. They give it back around again. And the first one to get this one on the hopper was Bake Barker. Barker had it. Here Wires is calling for it. Bromley goes inside. Bromley is wide open. They're killing the minor penalty right now with about a minute and five seconds left in the power play for the Indians. They come in, taking a diving play right there, stopped again by Bouquet, and they go in the corner. Here, Wire stays with his man. Stretch pass back to mid floor again, and Zubik picks it back up for the Indians. Zubik, nice stretch pass over the far side to Joseph. Joseph goes down. Zubik's off on a change. Mid floor again, back to McIntyre. McIntyre has it. Looks left side corner. McIntyre. Good give and go, McIntyre, McKinley, McIntyre. Again, McKinley gets himself wide open in front, takes a shot, stop, Penny takes it on a one hopper. And Roberts was all the way in front of the goal. Now Cornwall gets it on a stretch pass from Penny. Cornwall rips a shot, stop by Bouquet. What a bullet of a shot, stretch pass work. And Bouquet was the one that was really up to the task in stopping that one. 20 seconds left in the power play for North Shore. They come back down the left side, Goodwin comes in. Goodwin calling for it, he gets it back again. Goodwin goes in, Prince is calling. Prince gets it, Prince, mid floor, cross pass, back on the far side, Prince gets it back, rips it shot. Does it go in? It did, somehow that snuck past Eric Penny. He was partially screened, but it went in, and they'll put that one inside, and that gets them two on the board, and that will be a power play goal. A nice setup, power play goal in that play right there. Not gonna mistake that one, they should give that to Prince. And if they credit that goal to Prince right now, I'm just looking at the stats and see if we can find him in our, our stats column. Prince, they've only got him listed and play in two games. I know we've seen him play a couple of games, so I'm not really sure what the stats are, but I'll just say that's a goal, and it was. Prince scored it, what a crowning goal for that one by Mr. Prince. Now they go back around, Bromley has control, Bromley down the right side, Bromley comes inside, waits, Kid stays with him, over to Cornwall. Cornwall to Keith. Cornwall's off on a change. Shush comes on, as does Mallory. Mike Mallory is out there wanting it. Bromley goes back, changes his mind, goes back in his own half. Shush takes control, knocks the stick out of his hand, and Shush picks it back up. Cross pass, back on the far side again. Mallory, Shush, turns, spins to the right, goes inside. High shot over the shoulder, and it takes a funny hop and bounced wide. Shush will pick this one back up again. He's a man on a mission, going inside, looks 
Sets it back up, far side to Mallory. Mallory back in front, waits. Caputo shoots, scores! High shot, low shot, scores. And that gets him another one on the board. Not gonna mistake that one. They just buried that one, but the whole thing was started and set up as we watched that unfold clearly by Logan Shosh, who went all the way back behind the net to put that one back in. We talked about playoff leaders as I was trying to find him on the site right now. Uh, we'll go back the other way. I won't look for the playoff leaders. They didn't appear to be uh, in my view from what I was looking at. So again, the Indians grab the ball. They come back down the left side. Nice play to set up, back up. This is Kidd that has it. Kidd throws it back around again. Back to Joseph, he tried to grab it. And they'll come all the way back down. Doucette gives it back out again. Keith, low shot. Did it go in? No, stopped by Bouquet. Stretch pass again, back up the floor to Kidd. Kidd marches his way back down the left side. The drums again come to life. They're trailing nine to two. They want some more life on their shots and bury something behind Penny. Looks, waits, Kid still in control. Kid turns, goes inside, gets away. Roberts is calling for it. Cross pass over on the far side, off of the glass, and this one's going to be grabbed by Bromley, and Bromley comes all the way back out the center floor. Davidson has control. Davidson throws it back around again. Nice pass back out here. Wires has it. Looks, stops, turns. Back out to mid floor to Shush. Shush goes inside. Bromley's wide open. Will they give it to him? Not this time. Bromley runs the pick. Shush back out to mid floor. Here Wires gets a shot. Tried to pick this one back up again. Rolled wide and out of the webbing of his stick. And they go back up floor the other way. Turning. Bromley stays with his man inside the corner. Bromley and McKinley. Two of them pushed in the corner. McKinley gets away from him. Picks up some valuable foot speed. Comes all the way back out. A long one hopper. Too far past everybody. And McIntyre couldn't get control of that. And Penny. A one hopper, two hopper, two hoppers. He gets control back to Shush, far side again. Shush gets it back. Huge shot stopped again by Bouquet and deflected wide. Now we roll back the other way and they go all the way back down the floor the other way and Baker gets control. Baker out to mid floor again, back to McIntyre. McIntyre back pedals towards the wall. The drums come to life one more time. McIntyre is out there. Look, centers it back inside the corner. Trying to feed McIntyre, they did. Sub shot, missed the target. Picked it back up again. Wooden gets a shot away, blocked wide. Wooden goes after it, will he get it? Not this time. This one's grabbed again. They lob it all the way straight forward. Back out to Claire, and Claire goes down over to Cornwall on the right side. Cornwall comes inside. Cornwall's inside the corner. He's being tied up like a Christmas present. Nice play to tag him back up. Cornwall looks. Finally figures out what he's going to do with it. Throws it back around again over to Here Wires. Here Wires comes back down. Looks, cuts to the right side, goes in, back pedals. Back out to mid floor again. Looks, thinks about taking the shot away. Will he get it away? No, not this time. Now finally they just rip it back and they throw it inside the corner with a lot of the spectators letting him know how much time was on the shot clock. And they go back the other way, straight up the center floor. Indians on a roll. This is Dozy that threw it back around again. Back to Prince. Prince, left side, coming inside again. Looks, ripping a shot. Penny just caught a piece of that one. Back out to Prince, mid-floor again. McKinley comes in, trying to get the shot away. Unable to, and it goes back behind the net. And this is thrown all the way back out to center four to Lacroix. Lacroix back out again. Back to Pace, gets a shot. Stopped again by Bouquet, and they reverse and go back up the other way. Good, aggressive play right now, and Mason has it. Mason's off on a change. Indians coming to life and they're playing remarkable lacrosse right now. It's just a matter of time. They're going to get a couple past Penny. You can sort of sense it. Back again to Prince. Prince cuts back to the middle part of the floor again. What are they going to do? Setting it back up. The kid's calling for it again. They did. They give it to Kid. Kid rips a shot. Stopped by Penny. Grabbed again by Barker. And Barker holds on to it. Back down the right side. Back up the lacrosse. Rolled in and out of the webbing of his stick. And they're going to chase this one. And Kid comes in, he gets rocked in the corner. Solid check, and again, the fans are loving the aggressive play. Another solid hit against the wall. Good play, and Garrison comes inside to take care of business in the corner. Now they go back down, and Doucette calling for it. Looks, couldn't get control, Doucette was calling for it. Failed to give it back to him. They go inside again, huge shot taken by Pace. Pace goes after the rebound, couldn't grab this one. And the Indians will grab it and throw it straight up the mid floor one more time. Back to McMinn. 
McMim comes all the way back again. He holds on it over on the far right side as he sets this one back up. About eight and a half remaining in the second period of play. Nine to two for the Pioneers. Cross pass back on the far side by Prince. Prince gets it back, looks, throws it back in front. Shot taken again. And finally, they get one and bury that one in. That's Wooden that hammers it back. Now Claire comes in, wants to get a little bit of aggressive. And they're going to go back. See whether we're going to have any uh, penalties assessed by the referee. I don't think so. And we just talked about the aggressive play right now and how fast the Indians are passing the ball, working all the way out of their own half of the floor. And indeed, that was a prime example right there. 8.25 remaining, period number two right now. Nine to three, Indians marching all the way back. Drums come to life over on the far side. And from the draw, will they pick it back up? They did, Barker had it. Barker pulled it all the way back. It was grabbed, misplayed by Mason goes after. Waits. They love it all the way back, their own half of the floor. Mason goes off on a change. Goodwin goes after it. Goodwin's off on a change. Back to center floor to McIntyre calls for it. McIntyre, they heard and they gave it to him. Tic-tac-toe, three-way passing play. Prince is out there. Prince wants it. McIntyre wants it. Instead of that, everybody left it. And Wooden goes after it. Wooden off of the wall over the left side. Comes out in the middle, takes a sub shot. Missed the target that time. And Barker goes after it. Did he pick it up? No, Wooden grabs it, taking a shot stopped again by Penny. Penny being tested early right now. 9-3 for the Pioneers. Indians having lots of chances. They just roll this one straight forward. Back to Logan Shush. Shush comes back down. Barker's off on a chain. Shush is on the right side. Shush holding onto it. Far side as they dangle it back in front again. Caputo goes inside, pushed off of the ball. Keith goes after this one. Keith is in the corner. Stevens is with him this time. I think that's about the first or second shift we've seen Steven so far in the contest so far. Back again, shush. Back to the mid part of the floor again. Back to Mallory, Mallory's wide open. Shush is calling for it. Huge shot, Bouquet got that one off of the shoulder. Here Wires goes after it, he picks it back up. Gets away from his man, good play. Steven stays with him. Here Wires was knocked down, slow to get back up. Very slow to get back up. Limps off, I think he's gonna be going off on a change. Keith is off on a change. We'll keep our eyes open on here wires and see how he is because he limped literally off of the floor on the far side over to the bench and he's over attended being attended to by the training staff right now off of the wall wait to get the shot away roberts comes in roberts calls for it way out to mid floor prince is calling for it couldn't give it to prince referee has to move so he doesn't get run over shot clock goes pioneers possession of the ball and they'll leave this one as they finally leave this one again Caputo picks the ball up and he gives it all the way back out to mid floor again. Clear, long pass inside the right side, back around to Shush. Shush comes inside. Back out in front, waits, nice shot taken that time, but a nice pass. Bromley ended up getting the shot away, but a nice setup. Again, now they go back down the floor the other way. Garrison comes in. Garrison lobs it all the way back. Nice play by Garrison, give it back to McIntyre. McIntyre goes inside the corner. 15 on the shot clock. Garrison lobs it back. Good passing play to get it back around. Wide open is Kidd over on the far side. Will they see him? They didn't that time. Pushed him off of the ball. Careful for they don't get called for the free hand. Kidd is in there well. Again takes a shot. Bounced wide and the shot clock goes. So the Pioneers grab the ball back at center floor. Cornwall comes down. Cornwall goes inside trying to get it back to Caputo. Pushed off of the ball. Kidd is in the corner. Back to mid floor again. Back to Doucette. Set looks one hopper far side has to be in the change box for the line change to take place love that rule cross pass again right side here wires looks holds out of the ball shush comes in runs the pick here wires takes a shot that's blocked and we have a wide open foot race straight up the floor nice play to set this one back up going inside dozy takes the shot stopped by penny and then dozy gets pushed back and now we're gonna give the ball back around possession this time gonna go for north shore and once they get possession, they grab it. Good crowd on hand to take the game in tonight. Pick play, we've got a high stick called right now. Penalty, and it was swatted loose. And we're gonna give the ball back around again. Nope, they're questioning the call right now. Referee says, no way. And I believe this is gonna be Sam Clare gonna be going to the penalty box. And if this is Sam Clare going to the penalty box, we'll see if we can find Sam's stats as quick as we can.
try to look and find him on the uh, column. Sam Clare, he's played 15 games, seven goals, 12 assists, 61 penalty minutes in regular season play. Pass again, not counting playoffs. Far side, nice little bit of a give and go again. Prince has it. Prince goes in, trying to get the shot away. McIntyre couldn't get control of it. And now they go back up floor the other way and Cornwall dangles his way down. Cornwall shot, scores! And Cornwall goes in and that will be a shorthanded goal for the Ladner Pioneers. Puts them up double digits, 10 to three right now with 135 remaining in the minor penalty that we were talking about Claire as he sits inside the penalty box. So Claire, 61 penalty minutes, we'd mentioned that. 15 games played in the season, seven and 12 record for 19 points so far. Very impressive. We talked about Owen Barker as well. He's only played 10 games, five and nine record for 14 points on the season as well. They said it was trapped. So give the ball back to the Indians on this play. It was trapped at center floor by the Pioneers. So again, the drums come to life and they throw it back over on the far side. Nice play to march their way back down. Setting it back up again. This is Wooden that comes in. Wooden, mid floor again, the Prince. Prince looks far side, Prince. Wooden, cross pass, back around, takes the shot. Wooden's gonna go after it, unable to get control of it. Now they go back up floor the other way and Doucette will have it. Doucette goes inside, rips a low shot and scores. Gets one past Bouquet and they put that one back inside behind. Alex Bouquet who tried everything in his power to stop that one, just a little bit out of his reach, not gonna happen that way. Just a very, very impressive shot the way it all worked out. Let's not forget game two in this best of five series is Thursday night up at the Harry Jerome complex in North Vancouver. There was controversy around a while back because they were thinking about taking that building down and building something else, but should they take that down, there's no place for lacrosse to play up there. And the North Van Wolfpack, the junior B team, would have been forced to play out of the Karen Magnuson Arena, which is a small arena at the best of times. Cornwall looks, trying to give it back around this time, unable to. Wide open was Barker, and Barker goes back in his own half of the floor. Barker goes after his man, gives a little bit of a love tap to Goodwin. Barker, Goodwin, the two of them collided with each other, and they'll have control again, and McIntyre chases it back around again. Back all the way out, McIntyre calls for it, he gets it. McIntyre mid floor back to McKinley. McKinley goes in, runs the rolling pick right there, trying to get it back around. McIntyre calls for it. They gave it to him. Looks wide open over on the far side. They'll try and get the sub shot. They did. Roberts got the shot away, and this one stopped by Penny. And Penny made a pretty remarkable stop on that one. Well, what a nice three way passing play by North Shore to get the shot eventually on goal. Marker comes back down. Claire stands up. He's got about a Five seconds right now remaining in his minor penalty to come back onto the floor. 3-2 and he will return back out to the floor right now. They're killing seconds off the clock. Valuable seconds again. Barker had it. Claire goes back from one side to the other. An 85-foot run over to the penalty box to the player's bench. Now they'll grab this one and pick it back up again. Shot taken. It's grabbed back in the corner and Stevens is going to go after it with Stevens picking it back up. Stevens throws it straight forward. Good setup play to get it back to Shum. Shum comes down. Lobs it all the way back. Nice setup. Lob pass back around again. <clears throat> back to Wooden. Wooden had control. Spins, turns. Far side again. Wooden trying to get himself free and wide open and able to. And now Avery comes back down. Avery rips a shot. The ball was taken off of his stick by Gillis. And it takes a funny hop and goes in the corner over on the far side. And Shum picks it back up. Back to Gillis. Gillis up the mid floor once again. Cross pass back on the right side. Gillis is the trailer. McIntyre is in there as well. They threw it back around and McKinley had it. McKinley cuts inside. Joseph goes inside. Joseph cuts for the front part of the goal. Far side. Nice pass to set this one back up. That was McIntyre that had it. Wooden is wide open. They gave it to him. Bullet of a shot off of the back wall. They steal it. And they go back down and Lacroix picks down some valuable speed. Lacroix goes in. Looks, goes in, takes the shot. Claire ran the pick on that play right there, undetected. He was a trailer, just came in. He was on the right side, and he slowly cut to the left to take the defender off from unable to get control of it. Now they reverse, they go back. Will they throw it back? They did, they give it back to Prince. Prince comes back down. 
Prince, left side. Out to the middle floor, takes a shot off of the back wall, couldn't get control. Funny hop one more time, Gillis goes after it. Gillis is wide open, Cornwall thought they were going the other way. Goodwin goes in, takes a shot, stopped by Penny. In the corner, far side, Cornwall comes inside. Prince is in there, lobs it back again. Nice setup, back to Goodwin. Goodwin is wide open at mid floor, couldn't give it back to him again. Back to Prince, Prince goes in, back to the center floor again to Roberts. Roberts tried to get the shot away, block stopped. Will they get it? No, they didn't. Now they lob it back to Cornwall on a steal. Cornwall, one on one, ripping a shot, stopped again by Bouquet off of the right shoulder, deflected wide. We're in the last minute in period number two right now. And they'll lob it all the way back again. They'll leave the ball back. Back to Logan Shush. And he just glances up at the clock. He knows there's 50 seconds left. Glances down. Shush is calling for it. Here Wires goes in, takes a shot. Shush comes inside, try to get it. Bobby Kidd chases this one back around. Now we go back up floor the other way. Baker goes in, takes a shot. Bullet of a drive right there. Good foot speed to chase this one all the way back down. Now Here Wires comes back down. Shush is directing traffic. We've got about 25 seconds left in period number two. Here Wires throws it back, far side. Nice play to give it back on the far side to Mallory. Mallory goes in, he runs a pick. Garrison stays with him this time. Back around, Shush in front again. Here Wires goes in. Funny little bit of an attempted shot right there. He tried, but it rolled in and out of the webbing of a stick, and Keith goes after this one. Keith takes a shot, stopped by Bouquet again, holding on to it. Two and a half seconds left. They'll just whistle the play in, and as they just get control, they kill the seconds off of the clock. And all the way back down, and after two periods of play, we have a very, very fast-paced two periods. The score after two periods, 11 to two in favor of the Ladner Pioneers. Make mention that Thursday night's game will be at the Harry Jerome Center. 8 p.m. face-off again. We will be there. We will be webcasting that game again. And we will be on air at 7.45 on Thursday night in North Van. We'll be covering on SportsWave. TV will be covering all five games. Should it go five games, we'll be doing all five for your viewing pleasure. And if you get a chance, come on down and take the games in in person. Great games, entertaining games from start to finish. Fast-paced senior lacrosse supplied to you by the players that have made it to the final round right now. And I mentioned earlier on about North Vancouver, how they defeated Victoria. Good buddies over in Victoria. Friendly, friendly people over in Victoria, as are all the teams with the senior lacrosse out here. All five teams. So hope everyone's enjoying the call for the game. We've got a bit of a break right now, so grab something cool and refresh. Come on back and join us for the call for period three right after this.
Hi everybody, welcome back. Well, we are set to start period number three once the Ladner Pioneers return back out onto the floor. I was talking to a couple of spectators and primarily coaching staff between periods, asking them whether or not they might or might have a might or might not have a goaltending change. Uh, they've got Alex Bouquet still in between the pipes right now. They were telling me that uh, they were saying that they might put Bear Martin in in the th game Thursday night. So a little bit of a change that they're looking at doing right there for Thursday night in North Vancouver at the Harry Jerome Center, 8 o'clock, the face-off. So be sure to tune in and join us. 7.45, we'll be on air. We'll be calling the game at 8 o'clock. Game number two, and Saturday we'll be back here for game number three of this best of five final series. For the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association as the Pioneers right now. Perfect 16 wins on the season, 16 games, 16 wins. And you're looking at the North Shore Indians. Goals per average per game. They've got 9.6 in the goal differential, 25. And we are officially underway for period number three from Sun God Arena. So they have control. Baker has control. Baker goes back against the wall over on the right side this time as Baker sets it back up. Waits over on the far side again. Prince comes inside. Prince is calling for it. Couldn't get control. Back over the right side once again. Baker had a Baker run towards the front. Prince has control. Prince back pass back to Kid. Kid comes inside. Looks throws it back around again. Back to Gillis. Takes a shot. Stopped by Penny. Penny was stopped that one. Now we have a couple players pushing and shoving. And we've got a player down on the floor. He's not moving, so the referees are having a bit of a discussion. Safety first and foremost in a case like this, blow the whistle. The player is down on the floor, so you have to take care of the injured player first. And of course, the Pioneers are thinking they can go marching all the way up floor. Not gonna happen in that time. So we'll watch the trainer as she's gonna take care of Marcus Wooden, who is down on the floor. A couple players collided. It's a rough game. I won't say it's a dirty game. It's been aggressive. Both teams have played aggressive. We have had a couple of uh, nice solid body checks so far in the contest tonight. And we mentioned earlier on about the game as he is slow to get back up, gets back up. Good play, nice to see Wooden get back up, going off the floor on his own attention. Trainer is taking care of him, making sure he's going off on the far side. So the playoffs so far, we have made mention earlier on that the North Shore Indians, they have played two games against the Victoria Shamrocks, pulled out the two-game sweep, thus advancing them to the final league championship for the West Coast Senior Lacrosse against the Latin Pioneers. Perfect 16 and no season so far for the squad. Now they wait for it. Shush through a back round over the far side. Pace comes inside. Pace gets himself free, wide open, good play. Caputo goes in, runs the pick. Pace goes back to the far left side. Caputo goes in, runs the pick again. Nice play, Shush goes in, low shot, kicked back out again by Bouquet. Goes wide, pick play ran, taken off of the ball. That was Zubik that had it for a second. Now they'll leave this one, and finally, the Indians will march their way all the way back out to center floor. Kid comes back down. There's the drum over on the far side again. I'm just trying to find the drum. We had one over on the far side. I'm not sure whether it's there anymore. I'm still looking for it. Might have moved. Wouldn't be the first time it's caught me napping at the best of times. Now they go back around again. Carey centers it back all the way out to Mallory, and Mallory goes back down. Carey is off. Do, do sets off on a change again. Keith back out again. Nice play to Kirkby. Kirkby goes back down. Will he get it? Nope. Shush back pass over the shoulder. He scores. And Shush comes in. And you can watch him put that one back in. And that type of shot right there. That's why he plays pro lacrosse in the NLL. Speaking of NLL, we should make mention that they've hired a new commissioner as of today. We've got a new commissioner on board, which is what they wanted to do. They were talking about that, how they were going to be searching for a new commissioner. And of course, Brett Fogue is named the new commissioner for the NLL. Big addition, big changes. And of course he's got, was the president for NASCAR's Stuart Haas Racing and former Brown University lacrosse captain and a two-time Ivy League champion.
to lead the NLL. So congratulations to them to work that one back around. All the way back out to mid floor again. They get control. Lobbed it back. Nice play. And that was McIntyre that had it. McIntyre. Baker goes off on a change. McIntyre over deep on the right side. Back to Gillis. Gillis goes in. Back out to mid floor. Gillis trying to feed it back around. McKinley goes in. McKinley calls for it. McKinley is being guarded off of the ball. This time Doucette is pretty much stride for stride with him. And finally, they work the ball the way back down. And Cornwall goes back up the center floor. Cornwall throws it back behind him, back to Caputo. Caputo comes inside, waits. The trailer is Kirkby. Kirkby cut to the middle part. Keith is the trailer again. A one-hopper by Caputo. Back to Bromley. Bromley on the far side. Back to Keith. Keith goes inside. Back around again. Shush rips a shot. Stopped by Bouquet. And now we got a couple players come together, and we've got a good tilt going right now. Not going to be just one or two this time. The referees will go in and try and sort this one out. The referee is telling everybody to get in there and sort of separate everybody, see what we're going to have. Keith is in there for one. Shush just walks away. Doesn't need any part of this one. So I'm going to see what, if anything, they're going to be calling. The one that they were looking at was Keith, and I believe the other one was Baker. So Keith will go to the box. He's being escorted over. So they want to find out what the call is going to be, and they'll question it. So the referee will say, I'll let you know what the call will be as soon as we have a discussion. Two officials will get together. If all else fails, they'll phone their friend. Going to see if we can find the lady with the drum over in the corner instead of watching the referees try to sort this one back out. She's way up in the top corner, way over there. We'll see if we can get a shot of her with a drum. I had a chance to talk to the lovely lady earlier on. There you can see her over on the far side. I wouldn't want to be that drum. She, she's beating it pretty ferocious over on the far side. But she's up, she's doing a great job. It's nice, I love it when the drums come to the uh, arena. It just makes it so much more lively. We had a chance a few years back when they had the, uh, I guess it was the BC Junior A Lacrosse, and they had the Canadian Championship in the Langley Event Center, which uh, myself and Bruce went out to cover. And it was quite interesting because the North Shore Indians, they, Six Nations was playing. I should explain that first. Six Nations were playing, and we had a chance to talk to a couple of the chiefs for Six Nations. And we were talking to them and explained about the history of the drum, how it's all involved, what they do, and how they utilize it. And it's quite interesting to just to, to follow the whole, uh, whole platform when the Indians get the drum going. It, it's really a unique process. So we've got two players in the penalty box. We have, as I mentioned, Keith is in the penalty box for one. I believe the other one is Aiden Baker. And it worked out that there will be a four minute penalty assessed to Baker. And they've got four on the clock and two. So I think they're trying to sort this one back out right now. So I'm not sure. We've got four and two, but we've got an extra player in the penalty box right now. And we're playing four on four. So the only thing I can guess right now is that maybe Keith got a misconduct. So Keith, there's a minor up on the clock. So whatever he got won't start. His additional penalty won't start until he's finished. And the four minute penalty is naturally going against the number eight for North Shore. This is Baker. They take the ball in the corner once again. McKinley has it. McKinley goes after it, waits, trying to get it again. McKinley is chasing it back around. Now they'll pick up some speed and go back up for the other way. And this is Beers that goes back down. Beers goes inside, trying to feed it back over on the far side to Barker out of his reach. And now they reverse and go back up for the other way. Nice play to set it back up. This is Jensen that has it. Jensen goes in, waits, trying to get the shot away. Jensen goes in, not able to get control of it. Waits, a wooden had it, lost his footing, slow to get back up. Going off on a change on the far side, and they'll leave it, and Avery just has it. Stretch pass back to the middle part of the floor. They throw this one back down to Pace, and Pace goes inside. Pace, a one-hopper, back to center floor again. Pace give this one back around again, back to Caputo. Caputo goes in, shot, scores! And they'll get that goal on the board, and that'll put them up right now 13-3 to on the board. And nothing will happen and nothing will transpire with the penalties. The penalties will stay the same. 52 seconds on the minor penalty for Keith. And there's 252 left in the minor penalty for Stevens. I thought it was Baker in the penalty box, but it's Stevens. They change the number on the clock. 
Initially it did say Aiden Baker, number eight. Now it says nine, which is fine. We're still playing four on four. Now nope, they're gonna say they trapped the ball. They did, that was Doucette that trapped the ball. And the Indians will get it back out to mid floor again. This is Bobby Kidd that has it. Kidd has the ball, looks, trying to feed it back over. Goodwin gets it, rolled in and out of the webbing of Brandon Goodwin's stick. Now they'll chase it back around again, and will they get it? Yeah, they did. This is Davidson that picks it up behind the net. Davidson back out to Doucette at mid floor. Doucette comes back down, picks up B, takes a high shot over the top of the net. Doucette lost his stick. That was Shush that got the shot away over the shoulder. Shush is just a master at that back pass over the shoulder to get the shot on goal. Shush goes off on a change on the far side. This is Baker that picks it back up. Baker down the right side to Mason. Mason goes inside trying to grab it. Again, this was Davidson that has it. And Davidson just lobs it back around and Carey has the ball at mid floor. Carey goes back down. And the minor penalty for the Pioneers that Lacroix was serving for Keith has expired. So they wait, and now the Pioneers are on a power play for another minute and 52 seconds right now. Pace goes in, trying to feed it back around again, back to Caputo. Caputo calls for it, looks, shush, back to Pace. Pace goes in, will he give it back to Mallory? Mallory goes in, calls for it, low shot, stopped it, hit Mallory in the shin and bounced wide. And the Indians get all the way back out to mid floor one more time, and this is Jensen that has it. Jensen comes back down, turns, cross pass on the far side, missed it, goes over top of the net, and Barker couldn't get control. Now Barker gets it in the corner, and Kidd is with him. So Barker, back around. Pace eventually gets it back on the right side. Now Pacer, Pace comes back down, picking up some speed. We've got about 14.35 remaining in period number three. A minute and 10 left in the power play for the Pioneers. Indians are shorthanded, back out, Pace goes in. Looks, thought about giving the sub shot, he did. He got the shot, overhanded shot that time, got it back and Bouquet stops it. Bouquet, a one hopper, back out to mid floor to Baker. Baker comes up, throws it straight forward. Carey, over on the far side, Goodwin stays with him. Goodwin chases him back down, Carey's off on a change and they throw this one back to the mid part of the floor one more time, grabbed by Caputo. Pace is wide open, Pace calling for it. Here Wires has it, shush. Sub shot taken that time and missed the net. And it rolls all the way back down the floor. That was Caputo that got that initial shot away. And it goes back down again for Eric Penny. Penny to Pace. Pace goes up, left side again, back to Caputo, back to Pace, far side to Shush. Shush goes in, back to Caputo, takes the shot, stopped by Bouquet. What a save on that play. Pretty remarkable. Will he get a second one? Waits, here Wires gets the shot, it's over top of the net. And Baker grabs this one for the Indians and they look up at the clock. And as he takes a secondary glance right now, the minor penalty has expired. Keith is still sitting in the box. I'm guessing that he must have got 10. The drums come to life one more time. Far side, good fan support for North Shore. Back out in front again, takes the shot. Gillis gets the shot, it's off of the back wall. And Carey picks this one back up. Carey. Straight up the center floor once again to Sam Clare, and Clare dangles his way back down the right side. Clare out to the middle part of the floor. Nice play to Kirkby. Kirkby down the left side. Kirkby comes in, pace is wide open. Mallory is wide open, so is Bromley. Bromley's calling for it. Bromley runs the pick, far side to pace. Back in front, Bromley couldn't put his stick on this one. It goes back up floor the other way, and they reverse. They come back down again. Baker goes in. Baker, Stevens gets a shot away. And they reverse and Kirkby goes back the other way, straight down the floor. Instead of going north to south, he goes east to west, straight down the other way. Kirkby comes inside. 12 and a half remaining, period number three. Pioneers up 13 to three right now. Kirkby, shush, back to Kirkby again. Kirkby back pedals back towards the wall. Looks, huge shot taken, stopped by Bouquet, deflected. Rolls all the way off of the mesh and they'll give it back around, picks it back up. It was off the goaltender. That's why they're giving it back to the Pioneers. Bromley gives it back over the far side. Watched him play in junior as well, as did a lot of these players play in junior for the Delta Islanders. They give the cross pass back on the right side again. Shum, Shum throws it back again, back to Goodwin. Goodwin rips a shot, stopped by Penny, and Penny holds onto this one. Penny just easily gives this one back over again, back to Beers. Beers goes back, Irving stays with his man. Irving, Beers off on a change, waits back pass again by Barker. Barker gives it back to Beers. Beers back down again to Mallory. Mallory, left side. 
Takes his time, coming inside. Pace runs the pick. Mallory over in the far side corner. Back to Shush. Back to Kirkby. Kirkby comes in. Looks low shot back. Mallory rips a shot and scores. Low shot just hammers that one in. That puts him up. 14 to 3 right now with you got about 11.24 as I look at the clock. And it's funny the, the way the clock is set up for our location. The clock is actually the big bar that's blocking our vantage point as we take a look at it right there. And of course, if you go to any of the facilities, the arenas in Delta, you'll notice that there's the black mesh up there. And it's all for safety. In today's world, you have to be safety oriented. I would much rather have it white mesh rather than the black mesh. So they just knocked the ball down. Claire just gives this one back around again. This is gonna be grabbed and picked back up by Bromley. Bromley takes his time, cross pass, back on the far side to Mallory. Mallory goes back down. Bromley comes inside, pace is wide open. Looks, wait, shot, scores another one! And puts that one in and that gets him up to 15 right now. And again, tough game for North Shore. They're playing well. Now we will have a goaltending change. So if we can get a shot of the goaltender for the North Shore Indians over on the bench, you can see them. They're going to make the change. You can see Bear Martin coming in. So they're going to change goaltenders. Well deserved. I thought they might have changed earlier, but I am not the coach. I would never, ever pretend to be a coach. So the one that's going to be taken over right now between the pipes with 11 minutes left in the third period, Bear Martin. They either want to give, give Bouquet a little bit of a rest going into the next game or get Martin warmed up for next game. Six of one, half a dozen the other. You can be the judge of that one. So Bear Martin taking his time, goes back. They put them back on, they put the shoulder pads on. Remember years back, I did a broadcast. Of, it was a BC Junior lacrosse game in New West in Queens Park. And I won't tell you who the goaltender was. The goaltender, I was doing it with Terry Murray. And we were doing the broadcast for Rogers TV. And the goaltender actually had two sets of shoulder pads. And we kept looking thinking, man, this goalie has a small head or he's got real, real heavy shoulders. And finally they called a measurement on it. And it found out that he had two sets of shoulder pads. So you can imagine the shoulder pads, how big they were. And he just, it looked like a, something out of the movies on TV. His head was just protruding through the shoulder pads. Had to go in, remove them. The, the referees made them take them off. They come back over on the far side. Kid goes in. Kid takes it behind the net. Kid back out to mid floor again. Baker goes in. Baker pushed off of the ball, holding on to it again. Baker goes in towards the front of the goal. Roberts goes in. Roberts trying to get the shot away. He's pushed and knocked down. Now they play it back up again. Pick play ran. North Shore were calling for a bit of a pick play on that play right there. Referee said no. He was right beside it. And Doucette goes back up floor the other way. Doucette comes back. Far side. Doucette back again over to Bromley. Bromley goes in. Keith is wide open. Kirkby is wide open. They're thinking about giving it back to him. Now they give it back to Kirkby. He was wide open. Mallory comes in. Runs the pick. Kirkby comes inside. Now he's got to put the helmet back on. Everybody knows the rules in the building. I guess everybody, when you go to an, any sporting facility, everybody knows the rules except the referee. At least they'll, that's what the fans will tell you anyway. If the referees didn't know that, we're in trouble. Back in the corner, back pass going at this one. Pushed off of the ball. Gillis was pushed off of the ball. Now they throw it back over the far side. Bullet of a shot right there by Wooden. Gets the shot away again. They go inside. McKinley comes inside. McKinley turns. Throws it back in the corner. He's off on a change. It goes back in the corner on the right side. And Avery picks this one back up for the Pioneers. Avery slowly gets all the way back out to mid floor. Out to center floor one more time. And finally, they dangle the way back down. Nice play as Bromley just threw it in the corner. Bromley goes inside. Bromley with Garrison. Shot scored. Another one going inside. This will be Pace that puts that one inside. And the score just continues to climb. A big uphill battle. You look at the way the game's playing right now, you look at the season, the stats throughout the course of the season, and albeit this is the best of five series, you look at it, I've had a couple people tell me that between the second and third period, the start of the third, they were telling me that the way the game is playing, being played right now, they said this conceivably could be a three-game series, a three-game sweep. But I'm not counting that out at all, because I know North Shore's going to play at home 
What do we got? We have a penalty called by the referee. Not sure what. Oh, he cross-checked him to the floor after the face-off. It's a cross-checking penalty. And they're voicing their disapproval of the penalty. Bromley is trying to ask for a secondary call on that play right there. I think he wants to phone a friend right now, but he's not going to. And the other one questioning the call was Travis Irving. So Irving goes in the penalty box. He's going to be in there for two minutes. The referee is saying that he cross-checked him after the draw. Being down on the floor was fine, but you can't cross-check the guy if that's the case that transpired. And I'll give the referee the benefit of that one. I'll watch it on a replay and sort it back out. Penny stopped it way big. Nice stop right there to hold on that one. Doucette's going down the right side as they're slow to get up to mid-floor. This is Beers that has it. Beers goes in, still holding on to it. Looks a one-hopper back to center floor again. Beers gets it back, back from Barker. Back to Barker. A little bit of a give and go. Mid-floor, corner, back inside again. Wide open, off of the wall to get control of it. Caputo goes back after it. Beers is in there. Beers being worked over like a rag doll. Baker goes in. Waits. Nice stopped again. And this is Bear Martin that made that save. It'll be interesting to see whether Bear Martin starts and plays for game number two Thursday night at the Harry Jerome Center at 8 o'clock for the faceoff. Expecting a big crowd on that one. It's always tough when you travel from the North Shore going across the bridges, especially in rush hour traffic. Shot stopped again by Penny. Back out, will they grab it? On a one hopper they might, and they did, and this is McKinley that holds onto it. McKinley goes in, good play from McKinley as he gets it back over to McIntyre. McIntyre back to McKinley, McKinley goes in, looks, thinks about doing something with it. Finally figured it back out, back inside the corner, back out again, nice shot taken by McIntyre, stop. Penny kicked it back out. Now it goes in the corner and Roberts will pick this one back up. Roberts back around to McIntyre. In the corner, all the way out in front. Nice shot taken again by Wooden. Wooden had that one shot taken, and Claire is in the corner. We have a penalty coming up again, and this one's going against the Pioneers. I always question that. Here's the situation. So you've got a minor penalty currently being served right now, and the referee is calling another penalty going against the Pioneers. I question the fact of why you would not give them the ball and have additional seconds on the first penalty. So 12 seconds in the first minor penalty. That is serving. Irving's got 12 seconds left, and then the other one just came in. Sam Clare's got a minor penalty. Thought they called it for cross-checking. Shot off of the back wall. They'll go back after this one again. Far right side. McKinley comes in. McKinley takes a shot. Couldn't grab this one. Gillis comes in, trying to get it. Irving's back on the floor, and we have a five-on-four situation. Korth Keith is sitting in there, I think, until Christmas time. He's waiting for a present to be all gift-wrapped until he's allowed back on the floor. Of course, whatever transpired, I'm guessing he got a misconduct, and if that's the case, then he's going to need a whistle to come back on the floor after his penalty finishes, because he got two and ten, and neither, both penalties don't start at the same time. The minor goes first, then the misconduct. You can't have two and ten start at the same time for the rule enthusiasts out there listening in right now. Jensen goes in. Jensen throws it back around the center floor. Thought he was going to have it back, and McIntyre gets it. McIntyre goes down. McKinley looks back to McIntyre. Looks. Will they give it back around? Couldn't get it back. Wooden is out there. Wooden calls for it. Gets it. Rips a shot wide of the target. Wooden couldn't pick this one back up, and Doucette goes after this one back at center floor. They'll grab it again. They get it. Avery throws it all the way back down, back in the corner, and Davidson's going to go after it. Davidson's been used sparingly so far in the game tonight, but it gets with a significant 16-3 to lead. That's only fair. They're going to put him on the floor right now. Doucette is out there. Davidson's back there. Davidson looks, goes in. He's pushed off of the ball again. Stevens throws it straight forward. And finally, the Indians come back down with Kidd taking a low sub shot. And the Pioneers off on a change on the far side with 24 seconds left in the minor penalty for Claire. He stands up, gets ready to return back on the floor one more time. Gillis is out there. Shot scores, and that'll be a power play goal. Shot taken that time by McIntyre. And Claire comes back on the floor with 15 seconds left in his minor penalty. So that makes it 16 to 4. All we need are 12 more. Big uphill battle right now. Another dozen will be fine. And of course for North Shore, the Indians, they're just saying one 
one goal at a time, a little bit of motivation. If you don't win the first two periods, win the third period, and that carries motivation for your team going into the third game or the next game. From the draw, back at center, they knocked it back around this time, and Jensen went after it. Waits couldn't get control of it. Funny hop, and Garrison was in the corner with it. Back to mid floor again, back to Pace. Pace works his way back down, stops back, back pass. Here, Wires goes in, takes the shots. This is stopped by Martin. Martin deflected it, threw it back inside the corner. Good play to pick it back up again. McMinn stays with him, forced him wide to the outside. They give the ball back. I believe they'll give the ball, and they will. They'll give it back to the Pioneers to Pace. Pace has it in the corner. Kidd stays with his man in front. Far side, back to Shush. Shush rips a shot. That's off the top of the glass and bounces all the way back down with Shush picking this one back up. And he just throws it straight forward a dozen seconds in the shot clock. Pace back behind the net. Again, low shot. They score. Nice pass. Tic-tac-toe and Caputo goes in. And uh, now the minor, the, the misconduct or whatever transpired for Keith, he gets back onto the floor. Whatever took place, he's having a discussion with the referee. That's a no-win situation. That's like talking to an ex-wife that doesn't listen to you, ever. Take that firsthand. And I would never lie to the guys about that. If you want to get anybody mad, don't get your ex-wife mad at you. Something tells me they never have a sense of humor. So Gillis throws it back. Back around the far side, Baker picks this one back up. Baker gets away from his man, daggles himself free. Nice dancing play, he still has the ball. Baker still has it. Now throws it back around to the right side, back to Gillis. Good play by Baker in that play. Bromley takes him off of the ball. Bromley's up on a change. Davidson goes back. A one hop or off of the wall, and finally they're gonna race this one back down. Will they get it? They will. Doucette comes in, nope, couldn't get the shot away. Now they reset it. They take control, and finally, the Indians will march this one all the way back with four minutes left in period number three. 17 to four in favor of your Latin Pioneers, game one of the playoffs. Good, fast-paced game right now. Gotta give credit, Alex Bouquet had a strong first half. Change him in the third period, about the 13.02 mark. Bear Martin took over. Now we go back a long stretch pass off of the back wall. The shot clock's going to go. They will. They'll leave it for Eric Penny. Reset the 30-second shot clock. And they'll reset it and go all the way back up the other way with Matt Beers picking this one back up. Beers uh, back to Kirkby. Tyler Kirkby goes back down. Kirkby back in the corner again. Nice set up play. Back to Mallory. Mallory back around to Keith. He's resting. He wants to get the ball. He's been calling for it long enough. He had lots of chance in the penalty box to think about it. Far side, ripping a huge shot, wide of the target. Shush is gonna go after it, picks it back up, in and out of the webbing of a stick, finally picks it back up. Shot clock goes, reset the 30 second shot clock, and they'll leave this one back around again. And it's gonna be picked up by Bobby Kidd behind his own goal. Kidd gives this one back up to Jensen. Jensen on the right side, works his way back down. Nice play to set it back up on the right side as he dangles his way back, just under three minutes remaining in game one from the Sun God Arena. Going inside, back on the far side. Gillis gets the shot, got the pass anyway. Couldn't finish the shot away. They'll pick this one back up again. And this is Avery that has control. Avery back inside again, back to Irving, and Irving picks it up, throws it straight forward. Nice setup blast to Irving, and he's glanced back to Caputo, and Caputo takes a glance at the clock, wants to see how much time is left. Caputo comes inside, waits, looks back up the mid floor, back to Keith. Keith, far side one more time. Back around, Bromley goes in, waits, huge shot, that was kicked. Did they get control? No, they didn't. Somebody lost their stick out there. This is Pace that does not have a stick. Referee is gonna take control of it. Not sure what he's gonna do. We've got a player with no helmet on. So he's gonna put it back on. That's the second time the helmet's come off. He's having a bit of a discussion with the referee, not sure why, but he's picking his helmet up, slow to work his way off of the floor between Kidd and Eric Penny. The two of them were having a bit of a discussion behind the play. Mallory goes in, Keith goes inside, Kirkby is inside, Kirkby giving it back around, here wires, looks through it back, back pass, back to here wires. He goes after that one inside the corner, McMim picks it back up, takes a shot right on goal, and Bear Martin stops this one. Now we got a broken stick on the floor. 
Somebody will pick it back up. Maybe the referee will throw it over on the far side or hand deliver it himself. It's in the corner again. Carey goes after it. Carey's in the corner. Reset the shot clock. Now the stick will be delivered to the bench. Not sure whose it is, but somebody will get the stick, the broken portion, two portions of it right there. Barker throws it back out to mid floor again. This is back to Caputo. Caputo goes back around again. Kirkby's at center floor. Kirkby calls for it, gets control of it. Kirkby sets this one back up. Nice play, Mallory goes inside again. As Mallory goes inside, looks Mallory. Kirkby is over on the far left side wall. Huge shot off of Bear Martin's arm and it goes off of the top boards right there. And Mallory trying to pick it back up, unable to. Back out again, shush. Back out the center floor, takes the shot, it goes in. Quick tic-tac-toe gets past Bear Martin. I think that's only two that have got past Bear Martin so far in the third period right now. We've got 38 seconds left in period number three. Game number one of the playoff series we were talking earlier on about. The West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association. Game two. Thursday night, Harry Jerome Center, 8 p.m. Come on over and join us for the call or take the game in in person. Always fun to come out and watch the games as Bromley has it. The clock has not started. Now the clock started. The clock was frozen. We were being mesmerized in time right now. They're just going to kill seconds off of the clock, and as they kill seconds, waiting for it. They're slow to work their way back up. What are they going to do with it? Not really sure right now. Bromley waits. Walking like he's going through a check checkout at Walmart store, taking his time. You're not going to get a bag if you go to Walmart, so just take your time. A long shot taken, missed the net. I don't think Martin expected that shot right there. Nonetheless, the ball goes all the way back up the mid floor. They start the clock. They get it going, and the buzzer goes to end the game. And the uh, Ladner Pioneers have pulled out an impressive 18 to 4 victory in game number one of the final playoff series for the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association. Fast paced game. Both teams come out to play. And of course, the Pioneers enter in the game a perfect 16 and no record so far in the season. Indians fi fighting an uphill battle. But a great game so far, well played. Good, good fan base on hand to take the game in tonight. I have to commend everybody for coming out. Warm night over here in the lower mainland. And of course, it's supposed to have a couple of cool days, but it's supposed to get warm and hot again starting about Sunday. So be sure of that. And if you have pets, a little bit of a friendly reminder, don't take your pets out walking on the sidewalk. They don't need it and you don't need the aggravation. So on behalf of Sophie, Mateo doing all the magic work behind the scenes, making sure that I look good and sound good. I know he sent me a makeup jar earlier today, so I appreciate that, Mateo. Thanks for everybody for tuning in for tonight's game number one of the West Coast Senior Lacrosse Association from the Sun God Arena. Final score, your Latin Pioneers defeated the North Shore Indians by an 18 to four score. Till next broadcast Thursday night, if you don't play sport, at least be one.